Nichols to up here. All right, first order of business is Pledge of Allegiance. Commissioner Birch Santos, you want to? I'd be happy to. Thank you. The first item on the agenda, 1A, introduction of Commissioners Clayton, Tarleton, and Birch Santos. Do you guys want to say a few words? Would you like to say a few words in the intro? Kind of just a little bit of like background? Sure. So uh, I'm welcome to be back. Um, I've been on the Commission on Aging for the past eight years, and for the past two I was chairman. Um, so I'm excited that I am uh, and honored to be able to continue um, being a part of this commission and uh, growing all of our programs. Um, so yeah, I've been a Sacramento resident for nine years. West Sacramento, excuse me. I'm back and I've been here for a while. All except, <laughs> all except for the first year that we became a city. So This is an honor for me. Thank you. Tarleton's not here. All right, Tarleton's not uh, here. So, welcome. By the way, for the record, this is the first meeting of the Parks, Recreation, and Intergenerational Commission. Uh, so, we're uh, excited to be a part of this commission and merging, uh, you know, the youth services uh, with uh, the uh, rest of the Commission of Aging and all the other services that were offered for seniors uh, in West Sac. And I'm looking forward to learning more about a lot of those services as well. Uh, so. Glad to be part of this. All right, uh, item 1B, Oath of Allegiance for Public Officers. Ro roll call. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. Roll call? Thanks. He's my coach right here today. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Here. 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 All right. Oath of Allegiance for Public Officers. Okay. If you could please stand and raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Grace Carlos Santos. Do you solemnly swear? Do you solemnly swear? That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California against all enemies foreign and domestic against all enemies foreign and domestic and that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California and the Constitution of the State of California and that I will take this obligation freely and I will take this obligation freely without any mental reservation without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion or purpose of evasion and I will well and faithfully discharge and I will faithfully discharge the duties upon which I'm about to enter. The duties upon which I'm about to enter. Thank you. Please be seated. All right. Item 1C, election of commission chair. Anyone have any nominations? I'll nominate Commissioner Castillo. Second. Third. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, the motion carries. Thank you. Look forward to serving as chair of the commission. Uh, election of commission vice chair. Any uh, 
nominations. Who wants to do it? Nominate well, Commissioner. Yeah, that was <laughs> nominate Commissioner Nichols. Second. Is there a second? I'll second that. There we go. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Same. Motion carries. Congratulations, Commissioner. Item 1E, presentations by the public on matters not on the agenda within the jurisdiction of the commission. The commission is prohibited by law from discussing issues not on the agenda brought to them at this time. And I, ha I do have a card here uh, from Charlotte Dorsey. Can you hear me now? Yes. Um, good afternoon or good evening, commissioners. Uh, first, I want to welcome you and uh, wish you good luck in your tenure as commissioners. I'm very happy to see this nice array of diverse faces in terms of uh, you no know, age and gender and all the rest of it. It's very nice to see you here. Thank you for coming. Um, I hope to see you all at our senior resource fair on May the 1st. It's going to be at the community center. I believe that you all have a flyer. Uh, we have uh, generally have about 40 vendors that uh, address all kinds of needs of seniors, everything from food to technology to legal resources, um, transportation, uh, all kinds of uh, questions and answers can be, can be uh, researched there by the seniors. They come, come away with material that they can use in the future. They come away with names and addresses and phone numbers and, and emails that they can use to contact people in case they need any help. This year we have the added benefit of the um, uh, Yolo County District Attorney. Uh, their office has agreed to combine their, uh, the fair that they had in the past, which was their fraud fair, with the Senior Resources Fair. So they're going to have a unit there with people from the various entities that will talk about the fraud that is so prevalent now, now among people who want to uh, try to get what they can from seniors, and sometimes they're very successful. So again, that's going to be on May the 1st. Uh, we're going to have uh, prizes and food and uh, a lot of in interesting information. Please come. I've also been asked to uh, convey a message to you uh, from several of our older citizens, and I'm going to read it because I don't want to leave anything out. When the seniors in our community heard that the Commission on Aging was being discontinued or refocused, there was much dismay and a bit of anger. Although many realized that this may have been a practical move by the city and that bringing youth and seniors together in conversations and programs would be beneficial, they are afraid that the voices of seniors would be lost. According to the 2013 U.S. Senate, uh, Census in Yolo County, from 1990 to 2020, the over 65 population will increase by anywhere from 50 to 99 percent. Currently, 11.1 of the county population is 65 years and over. It's, e it's easy to forget our older ci citizens. Traditionally, they are not from generations that speak up or that confront authority. They may seem to be as quiet ones, but inside they know what's important. Senior citizens can have a voice in their communities. They participate, vote, volunteer, shop, utilize services, pay taxes, and their numbers are growing. They need transportation, food, health care, social activities, inclusion, and recognition for their contributions. They want to be included in planning for activities and services that affect them, not from a distance, but close up and personal, because they add value. This new commission can be a marvelous symbiotic relationship if done right. Please don't forget our senior citizens. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Charlotte. Thank you. I know we can't discuss, but I just want to thank you for uh, coming and sharing the resource for the resource fair. I think it's great that the West Sac Parks and Rec is, is collaborating with, with, uh, with the Senior Resource Fair. And if we can even share it on Facebook, on our page, and for other folks uh, to be aware of it, that would be awesome. And, and another point, I think, I think all of us here are just as committed uh, to supporting youth programs, but also supporting senior programs. I know Commissioner 
uh, Birch uh, Santos has been on the Commission of Aging for the past eight years. Uh, and I, we already had a conversation in the back that she's going to teach me uh, and, and give me some knowledge on all the programs that are available for seniors uh, in West Sac. So, and I'm looking forward to also hearing, I think the entire commission is looking forward to hearing from the public, uh, from you all, uh, on the needs of seniors uh, in West Sac and, and stuff that you guys want to see and, and um, be heard. So appreciate you coming out today. Thank you. All right, item 1F, commission communications. Any communications? First meeting. Okay. Uh, presentation, we're going to go to presentations. Uh, item two on the agenda, introduction of the West Sacramento Tennis Club. Chris Mundhink, apologize for the mispronunciation there. Club president. Actually, I'll uh, get a chance to introduce uh, Chris here in a second. Uh, congratulations, commissioners. Um, my name is Jeffrey Ross. I'm a resident here in West Sacramento, one of the founding men members of the new tennis club. It's kind of fitting for your uh, first meeting to have a sport that kind of covers the ages from about uh, any given time, about a five-year-old on the court, all the way to someone usually in their 70s, sometimes in their 80s, depending if they're able to, to still uh, do the mixed doubles and things like that. But um, you know, it's it's a vibrant uh, history and culture of tennis in, in this community, and it's uh, over the years it's it's been a very vibrant uh, community as well. And it's now taking its next step, where it's beginning to be organized, to be able to try and bring people together, and to do a few things that um, will hopefully allow us as community members to partner with the city and you as commissioners uh, to continue to help uh, this sport that we love uh, thrive and move forward. Uh, just for some of you, I, I don't know if, if you're aware of, of some of the rich history that, that West Sacramento has in terms of tennis, but River City High School has one of the most highly rated and premier tennis programs uh, around. Out of the last 30 years, they've won 20 uh, league titles. They've won um, three section titles, and they've had over 100 um, students be considered all league and things like that. And those youth feed right into uh, a lot of the folks that we see as adults playing out on the courts and things like that. So we have kids that go to, co go to college and come back and play with us. And uh, it's, been, it's been great. And so uh, with that, I'd like to take the chance to introduce Chris Mundank, who is our now founding president of the tennis club. So he can uh, introduce kind of uh, some of the activities and things that we have coming up. Thank you very much, commissioners. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, good evening. As you mentioned, my name is Chris Montank, the newly elected president. Um, tennis club began forming in February, um, basically just a bunch of people getting together down at the rec center. Um, we're now up to about 30 people in terms of membership. Um, we're intended as a family club for the local residents and other tennis players. I mean, we're, we're not going to say if you live in Sacramento, you can't come and play with us. Um, but our overarching goal is really to promote tennis within the city for all interested residents and to kind of provide a forum for people to meet new tennis players, find new tennis partners just to meet up on the courts with. Um, a little bit of background about kind of what we've decided we're going to do um, moving forward. Uh, we're currently pursuing 501c3, uh, sort of designation as a, as a nonprofit. Um, we're really trying to work with the rec center staff as well as with the high school tennis coach, Dave, um, on various tennis events. He holds round robins, he holds uh, various just kind of group classes on Saturdays and Sundays, also on Thursdays. So we're just trying to help to promote those and also just to, to bring in some other events that might help out. Um, we are going to try and have some, some individual club events um, that will be advertised through our club webpage, which is really just a Facebook page, um, as well as at the rec center and, and hopefully around the city in, in various locations. Um, we're also going to attempt through certain fundraising, um, provide tennis-related items that can be used by the club, um, the rec center, as well as the high school team. Uh, one of the things we're currently looking at is providing a ball machine um, because right now it's really just Dave out there for the high school kids and it would be nice if he could just flip a switch and not have to feed balls the entire time. Um, we're also looking at potentially forming uh, one or two uh, USTA, SATA teams that can then kind of compete locally or in the region against, you know, Davis has a tennis club, McKinley Park has a tennis club. They're, they're all over the place. Um, a little bit about our upcoming events. On April 18th, 
Uh, we do have a fundraiser down at Streets of London Pub. You guys are all invited to attend. I actually have flyers for the event if you'd like one. Um, it, we're going to have a live band there. There's going to be a raffle um, as well as some silent auctions. There's going to be, uh, we actually went around to a lot of local businesses. So we've got stuff from Go-Kart Racer. We've got stuff from Wag Pet Hotel. We've got, uh, I think, Home Depot. Um, just a lot of different businesses, probably about, I guess, 20 raffle prizes. Um, and I'm bringing a, an old signed Pete Sampras tennis card, if you guys know who he is. Um, so that'll be up for, uh, for a silent auction. Um, anyway, we hope you come. All the funds are going to go towards uh, some of the fees for establishing ourselves as a 501c3, um, as well as potentially towards that ball machine. And then, you know, we'll see where things go from there. On May 3rd, um, we're going to have a round robin, if any of you are tennis players, um, from 8.30 to 12.30. Okay. Sorry? What day? May 3rd? Uh, May 3rd. Um, so it's Sunday. Um, and we're going to have sign-ups basically at the rec center um, as well as at our April 18th fundraiser. It's going to be free to, to anyone who wants to sign up and come. And it's really just kind of our first introduction other than the fundraiser for people to get on the courts and play with each other. Um, then on June 12th, we're going to have a social event. Um, it's basically going to be just at the courts, come, get together, see who we get, and let's play. Um, and I think that kind of those two events are going to be kind of our, our, our common theme for just trying to get people out. Because we really do want to really push, um, not push, but uh, <laughs> promote mm -hmm. um, people getting involved in, in, in playing tennis. Because I have been playing the sport since 1991, and I loved it. I actually got to the first match I ever saw was Pete Sampras, and I was sitting about six feet away from him when he was resting between games. Um, anyway. Um, I did want to bring up a couple of things just that, that we've noticed as, as residents and tennis players in the city. Um, currently within the city, we have no publicly accessible tennis courts. Right. Um, a lot of us play down at the rec center, but you need to have a membership there. There are about eight courts at the old, uh, I think it's the old high school. It's now attached to the elementary school, but they're kind of locked and hidden behind a gate. Um, they're not in bad shape. They could use a little bit of cleaning, but that's fine. And then the, I've heard that there's some in a locked community down in in Southport. Um, I'd really like to see some publicly available tennis courts that people don't have to pay a fee for at some point. Um, I know that there's a lot of momentum right now behind the Bright Park Master Plan. And I took a look at it, and it's, it's all softball and soccer, really. Um, if there's any way that people could consider potentially adjusting that to, to include a couple of tennis courts, I think that would be great. But I realize that's not going to happen tomorrow. Um, I did want to say thanks especially to the rec center staff um, who have helped us out kind of fumble through our formation, at least in the beginning. Um, Brandy Dion and Paul Reyes especially. Um, we've been talking through, you know, how we're going to grow moving forward. And right now they're just, they're letting us pretty much do what we want with a little bit of guidance. Um, but they are definitely providing guidance um, in terms of we, we came in with some lofty goals like, oh, let's put lights up. And, you know, well, we technically couldn't just walk in and, and pay for a contractor to put lights up. And, and they've helped bring us down to earth a little bit, but they've also been very encouraging um, with helping set up our different events. Um, also did want to thank the, the high school tennis coach. Um, he has been instrumental in kind of getting things started and getting us to this point where the club can, can start moving forward. And, and also to you guys for just letting me ramble for about the last five minutes. So I'm totally up for any questions if you have them and if you'd like the the flyers I can hand them out I don't know if I need to give them to Michelle you can just hand them yeah you can just bring them over here and, and I have <coughs> questions sure so um, is do, do you have to have a membership at the rec center to come and play tennis or is there a drop-in fee so I want to come and I want to hit balls but I don't have plans to work out well is that's that something that that's is one of the things that the club is trying to do right now mm -hmm. um, Brandy and Paul have said that for club events they're not going to charge a, a fee mm -hmm. um, we're just going to try and handle it through through signups mm -hmm. so that when we have like the round robin or we have the the social event mm -hmm. people can just come in and say that they're there for the tennis club event and and they won't have to pay the fee Got but it. if you do want to use the courts any other time you do have to pay the day fee so on the Saturdays or the Thursdays whenever these round robin open hitting sessions are available you have to be a member to come. Not if they're a tennis club event. That's when. Not an event, but I, from what you're saying is that. Well, the, the, the round robin, the round those are our events. events. So those are considered events. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then um, have you guys thought about starting a juniors program? Because you have all these high school kids that, you know, are potentially and up and comers and. That's part of us moving forward. I mean, uh, right now we just, we want to kind of 
see if we actually have a club because I mean we're, we're two months in and mm -hmm. we want to get interest up because mm -hmm. um, right now as I said we're at about 30 people we're hoping to get up to about 60 or 70 and then we can we can start to talk about a juniors program Got it. Um, okay and kind of in our six month window is is forming that USTA SATA team so that you know we can we can basically show that we're doing sure. something have um, you thought about meetups meetups could work um, that was I think that I'm not exactly sure if, if your idea of a meetup is meshing with my idea of a social yes so okay. we post that the rec centers having yes. an event and like individuals that want to come in and play tennis can come to the rec center. right so that'll be our June 12th got it event. okay right there's actually there are apartments there on Linden Road right off of Jefferson if you went down take a right and probably I think it's the second street you take another left you'll see some tennis courts back there that was supposed to be the other one that was supposed to be available to the public but it's not littered then okay and so those ones are available to the public off of Linden it's supposed to be okay I thought I'd heard that they were actually just for the residents there, but maybe I, I may well, be mistaken. put it this way. As of probably about five or six years ago, they were supposed to be. Okay. You know, now, I, as far as I know, I have never heard anything change since I've been on this board. But nope. I'll that, that was the one that was available when I was before the school had opened up. That Oh, yeah, well, you guys can use these back here. Okay. Yeah, and the ones at the high school, like I said, the, the old high school drawback was that they, uh, the ground underneath, they were worried about it. That's why they didn't want to... Uh, replace them at all yeah it, it's a it's a little warped I actually yeah. drove by there today um, and you know there's some puddles so you can see that it's, yep. it's not completely level but I know I watched, I watched my, my boy sit there and play tennis for days for years and so I, I was very lucky that way so any other questions from the yeah um, I'll also say I grew up playing tennis and my dad plays now when he's 80 and uh, certainly it's something that you know, I played up into high school and everything and pretty much every day but it was always challenging finding a place to play and this was in Los Angeles and it was you know go to this park it was full go to this park it was full their challenge they had the parks but they didn't have there are so many people that they didn't have enough room for them yeah. now I see here is we don't have enough courts but do we have enough people to play and I think that's what you guys are gearing toward is like trying to build that mass and get it organized to a point where you can come to the city and say look we have 85 people that want to play tennis every day but we don't have the facilities and I think that's kind of a, a great start and you guys are on the right track to get that because otherwise it's like you coming to us saying hey we want to play tennis so, great we got courts right there <laughs> no I, I understand I've I mean I've been a resident for eight years and I, I think I've played in a couple of the round robins right when the or the the leagues when the the rec center first started up um, but you did still have to I think you still have to be a member I know I, I was at that point and then after that I, I mean I was going to McKinley Park I was I was going just over the the bridge to I forget what the park is where they have the farmers market, but I I play tennis on those two courts and, and those are as bad as the, yeah, the, the old south, high school the south side park courts. Yeah. Um, the south side. Yeah, yeah south side. De de definitely and it's um, like chicken and the egg. It's like right. if you build the courts, people will play on them. But if you build right. the people, then we'll build the courts. I don't know. It's 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 a tough one. So uh, keep up with your work and uh, certainly that'll. Yeah, that'll hopefully help. in a year I'll I'll come back before you guys and I'll say all right we're up to 100. Where, <laughs> where are my lights? <laughs> Well, that, that would be nice, but I'm, I'm not putting that on the wish list just yet. <laughs> All right, thanks. Any other questions? Actually, a quick thanks for coming out. I think sure. that's what I love about West Sac, that there's members of the community who actually stand, you know, stand up and step up uh, and help organize these type of uh, sports uh, for our um, community. So it's great that you came out and presented this for us and you're taking the initiative to do that. So thank you. Okay. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Consent agenda, item three, approval of the minutes of the previously seated commission. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. So I'll second. Second, all those in favor, aye. 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 All those opposed, and the motion passes. Regular agenda, item four, a city of West Sacramento special event ordinance revision. Bob Johnson, director of parks and rec. Good evening, commissioners, <clears throat> and uh, welcome back to those familiar faces, and welcome to the to the new uh, members. Hopefully, we'll get a chance to spend some time outside of this and uh, kind of filling you in on some of the projects that we've been working on and and some of the things going on in the city. Um, 
I'm going to speak a little bit about uh, a very exciting project that uh, we had an opportunity to uh, pursue just recently, and that's the Kaboom Disney Grant. Um, I'm sure you guys have read about that. Uh, we were actually contacted, our mayor was contacted on March the 10th. So uh, this is a, a very, and, and we had our, we actually had our design day uh, this afternoon at Bright Park and over at Riverbank Elementary School. So uh, we're very excited about this opportunity. It's actually a, a, a kickstart to our Bright Park master plan that this group has, uh, has worked on over the years and, and has reviewed. So we're, we're pretty excited about this. We had a, a number of kids for a design day today. They all got a chance to draw some playgrounds and we had um, some of our key volunteers, our adult volunteers there, signing up for different committees and, and those sorts of things. So uh, hopefully we can get some of the commissioners involved and uh, we're all looking forward to the build day, which is gonna be May 31st. And that's when we build a 5,000 square foot, well, actually 8,000 square foot playground in about six hours. So um, it's gonna be a pretty, uh, pretty interesting and unique uh, event and opportunity for West Sacramento. And we thank Kaboom and we certainly thank Disney for their contribution. It was quite generous and this is the largest build that uh, Kaboom Disney has done in their history of, the, of doing these, these projects. So again, we're, we're excited about that one. Uh, I'm here before you tonight to talk a little bit about the city's special event policy and, and existing ordinance. Um, last summer there were a number of events uh, that the city actually hosted, uh, some of which went very well, some of which didn't go very well, and it really, it really prompted us, um, and, and I don't mean to say they didn't go very well, but they, you know, we had some challenges. Um, uh, you know, we had uh, uh, a horror camp out, out at, uh, out at Vera Farms that, that created some buzz in the community, and uh, the TBD festival, while it was a great festival, a lot of people came into town, generated a lot of noise, noise issues, and, and some other issues. So. It, it really caused staff to sort of sit back, take a look at our existing ordinance, and talk about how we might change the ordinance to really better reflect what was going on in our community with respect to special events. Um, we are fast becoming uh, a very popular place to hold special events, and so we're trying to, uh, we're also finding that while it's, while we love having them here, it's become a real drain on on city resources, because oftentimes we'll do two events in a weekend, and that requires police officers and parks guys to come in. So uh, <clears throat> we really needed to, to, to take a look at the current ordinance. The way I've drafted, uh, I didn't give you the thick full book ordinance. This is kind of the Reader's Digest version. And uh, what we've done in this is we've sort of outlined the existing ordinance, and then we're making some recommend, uh, recommendations uh, within this for changes. Um, and I'll speak to some of those a little bit more, more specifically, but um, the one issue that we uh, sort of realized um, fairly, uh, you know, fairly soon in this was cost, cost recovery. I mentioned that just briefly. And so we wanna look at the ordinance and make sure that we're getting all the costs that it takes uh, at least city costs that it takes to produce these events. Um, make sure that the departments that are involved are getting are getting um, compensated for their time. Uh, we've had um, sort of a spotted pass. Some departments were really good at, at sending bills and, and collecting. We're trying to consolidate all that now. The other thing that's happened, it actually happened last fall. Uh, the police department uh, historically has been sort of the front door for special events. If you wanted to hold a special event, you would contact the police department and they would direct you to the website um, and, and, and then the police department would then take, take that special event, distribute that out for comments to the different departments. Um, it's now uh, housed in Parks and Recreation, so we are now the front door for special events, so anyone wanting a special event will come to us. Uh, we're really going through uh, a process change. We're changing our, uh, our, our website. Uh, we're actually changing the way how we do this. We, we put a special event committee together now. Uh, some of these things are discussed in here in a little bit more detail. Um, 
and so far we've actually implemented a lot of this stuff just just because we had to and and at this point we feel like it's it's working quite well so uh, we get an application in we meet every couple of weeks we'll get the committee together uh, does police have any problems with this does fire have any issues does the building department have any issues uh, everybody's at the table to talk about it uh, sometimes we've actually have uh, applicants special event applicants come in to those meetings so we can ask questions and have some exchange. So it's been working really well. And now the next step is just to take the ordinance and sort of sort of draft the ordinance. Uh, so it, it, it really reflects more of, of how we're doing things currently. Um, the other issue we had, I mentioned that earlier, was the, was the noise, uh, you know, with, with TBD. The city, at the time of that event, really had, we had a noise ordinance but it really, it really didn't apply to events like TBD. Um, and so it was hard to take the existing ordinance. Typically, noise ordinances, you, you sort of track the decibels over a 24-hour period of time, and it doesn't really allow for the spike. So if you looked at our cur current ordinance, based on the readings that we were doing, it would have fallen within the ordinance. But that didn't help the people whose pictures were shaking on the wall, you know, a, a mile away from the event. So um, we've actually toughened up. We're, we're uh, proposing to toughen up the noise part. We're actually, we're actually going to have event promoters come in, provide a, a noise plan, a sound plan, how they're going to monitor that. If there's, exp if there's an expense in, involved in that, then they'll have to uh, pay that expense themselves to monitor their own sound. Um, and again, we think that we'll, we'll try that this year and, and see how that works. If it doesn't, if we have to get tougher, we'll have, we'll have to get tougher. Um, I'm trying to think if there was anything in here else that I wanted to touch on before I, I ask you guys if you had any questions. Uh, we, are, we are looking to get the actual ordinance adopted by the city council um, the middle of this month at their next meeting. So really what we're looking for tonight from you is sort of your, hopefully you've had a chance to kind of read through this and, and un understand this to some degree. Uh, if you have any comments with respect to special events or your experience with them or um, are we going in the right direction or if you have any questions, uh, we'd like to get those comments tonight. Make sure that we include them in the staff report that goes to the city council uh, so they can, they can hear your, uh, your questions or your comments. So with that, I'll... See if anybody has it. I have a question. Why do uh, venues attract West Sacramento? Is it the opportunity for larger areas, cheaper venue rentals? I mean, why, why did that one music festival that we all heard come to West Sacramento versus just going across the bridge to downtown? Well, that, that, one, that one was a little bit unique in that um, if you follow at all what's going on in the bridge district and you've heard about the barn. Yes, yeah. of course, yeah. So, um, we didn't have we, we were hoping to have the barn we didn't have the barn last summer and uh, the promoters of the tbd festival are actually also involved in the barn project okay. and so they wanted they wanted to do an event uh despite not not having the barn so they approached us and said we want to do this this music festival we thought it was a great idea uh they actually came in fairly late normally something like this we'd like to be working with them on for six months I think we had, I don't know, six weeks or something to try to work out all the details and, and, and get this done. It wasn't a lot of time. Um, we expect them to come in any day now to start talking about next year's event. But that's really what that one was. So that, that specific event, it was really more about um, they have a place in West Sacramento already. Uh, we just broke ground on the barn a, a couple of weeks ago. So hopefully by uh, TBD this coming summer that the barn will be up that's what that's what what I'm hearing is what is what they're shooting for you know other events uh, we you know we're uh, we're considering an event right now that's going to be and I don't know the date of the first festival I want to say it's May 13th um, this was a group again that that came to us uh, initially they wanted to do a free festival with music and food trucks and um, uh, you know, booths and people selling stuff, and uh, they had sponsors lined up. We said, "Great, that's something that we'd like. We'd very much like to consider. It's great for West Sac residents. West Sac residents can go in." Then they sort of flipped, and they decided they were going to charge for tickets, 
And we said, well, now it's a private event. So that, that sort of changes it. Now you're not really doing anything for anybody who lives in West Sac, and it's going to cost us you know, money. And um, So these things go a lot, of, a lot of different directions. But historically, we've tried to attract the events because we like to have stuff going on in, in West Sacramento. So it revenue, essentially regardless of how far exactly small. right okay. yeah um, will yeah. the construction of the barn be designed to accommodate you know sound large and, large events exactly and to be able to kind of adhere to the sound monitoring or is that being considered so that yeah the way the way the way the barn will function and operate is that for the most part what they're doing in there will be contained within the building but they have requested that they be able to expand the exterior of it uh, to include events like TBD. So they've actually, they've actually, uh, uh, if, if you were to look at their their uh, plans, <clears throat> they have a an alternative for just the barn events that take place there. They have an alternative for larger events that I think are a thousand to two thousand people, and then they have an alternative for larger events that are uh, much like TBD in size. But it's but they'll just grow it for that particular event. So, uh, but again, I haven't seen a schedule, so I'm not sure. But um, you know, my guess is that 75 percent of the time, it, whatever they do there will be contained within the barn footprint, and, and not the footprint won't be expanded. I think um, one of the answers to the question is kind of like, why are people coming here to do their events? It's because we've welcomed them to come do their events. Um, made it made it easy to do business with the city if that mm -hmm. makes sense so if you want to come in here and do the event we're not putting up a bunch of roadblocks so that you can't do the event so we're going to work with you we're going to see how it works and then we're going to make adjustments right. and you know the unfortunate of that is like some people don't like how it worked out and then they have the ability to voice those concerns and go back and look at special events and organization i think moving it from police department to Parks and Rec is a great idea because the police department often is like says no first and then says figures out how to do it. Um, you know my experience working with the sort of on the periphery of organizing the you know cyclocross race that we did last year right. at, at Riverwalk Park that seemed to go over really well. Everybody kind of you know, all the feedback we got was very positive on that. You know yeah it was loud at some point and maybe next year they want to do lights and do something different, but that's something that we'll figure out how to do. I think that'll fall within that whatever ordinance we guys put, we put together, everybody will work toward that, and it's not going to be something that's going to be a roadblock to stop stuff from happening. Right. But it's also going to put in some guidelines so you can't just have a you know free for all. I mean, I think specifically uh, addressing the different use of differently zoned areas, like the zombie camp out at right. the pumpkin patch <clears throat> thing. I mean. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's fun to do that every once in a while, but you have to be concerned with what the, you know, what's going to happen to the neighbors. So we saw what happened last time, and now we're able to address that. So yeah. as long as you, you know, keep those things in there and not create a bunch of unnecessary roadblocks, I think we're in a good shape to, uh, with what you guys wrote down to be able like, to handle and contain those issues. Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, I know the art section has been there for quite a while. It just seems like we haven't really... Uh, and having to utilize it quite as much lately. What section? Our, the ordinance for the oh, boys and, right. and the others. Because remember, right. way back when, we used to have some, uh, the city actually used to put together some concerts and so forth. And so we, we came across these problems. Uh, and we had to worry about making sure that the city was be able to get the help there when they needed them. Um, I would assume that, I know there was some fees also involved in that, I think. Uh, I would probably maybe think about getting maybe half the money up front because I assume like the, the one that you had there, uh, as far as I know, they didn't make as much as they wanted. So they want to do it again, but I don't think they paid the creditors uh, the money that they were owed to begin with. So, um, And then it sounds like Sacramento was complaining mostly on the sound ordinance, you know, which you got the river right across. So that's a pretty good distance. And, and I know that... The sound ordinance has been around for a while too because San Pedro Park, we've had to worry about it there. So, so I, I know that the, the only thing that I would look, because I know that we, we, had, we went through this problem before, but maybe we haven't, we have a little bit more, people are using the, the river walk area and so forth and more a little bit now. 
but I would think about you know making sure we start getting some money up front per se so that at least we uh, come from that part and then like I said if, it's, if you're going to have a lot of sound ordinance problems make sure that the, you know uh, we cover that so that we don't make the neighborhood all bent out of shape yeah <clears throat> one of the things we learned it, it wasn't just wasn't just the noise it was really you know this group came in said we want to go from uh, you know 12 o'clock uh, noon to midnight for three nights in a row and I think one of the things we learned is you know midnight on a Sunday night when people have to get up and, and go to work in the morning and that's when they have their closing act and it's Moby and he's like da 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 and it was you know just this drilling sort of bass that was ringing through through every place so um, we did do a debrief with the uh, TVD festival organizers and that was one of the first things we said is you guys we gotta we, we got to bring the hours of the event back into some you know reasonable sort of uh, time frame and so I don't think you're going to see midnight on on a Sunday night that's something that we we could have done but frankly you know when we all looked at it when they came in we thought it's out along the river it sort of faces you know down the river it doesn't really face across or not really to any <clears throat> any uh, into any of the neighborhoods and I, I just I just don't we didn't anticipate um, that level of uh, of noise so um, yeah so I think I think just simply you know doing some things with the hours with the event hours uh, the placement of the acts which you know what act goes on last on on Sunday night I think is going to have uh, it's going to soften the event uh, quite a bit so um, if they want to play the noisy guys they can they can do that earlier in the day you realize how old you sound now <laughs> I, I am old I, there's no yeah I those kids with their rock and roll I thought it was pretty cool to see everything going across the river and I live kind of in a close proximity and it I yeah I thought it was a pretty cool thing to have in the city per se but it it was a great event um, you know the city received a lot of positive publicity and a lot of press um, you know we did we had some noise complaints and uh, you know there were there were a few other issues but you know again for a first-time event and the lateness of which they approached us to discuss it um, you know this year if they're back and we do it again and we hope that they are um, I think it's gonna be a lot uh, a lot more manageable and a lot better event Commissioner Nickel was just down the street I was enjoying the festival from my house in Bridgeway Mm -hmm. uh, just listening outside the window, so yeah, it was pretty, pretty loud. Apartments right there that could even be worse. That's probably where those noise complaints were coming from. Yeah, uh, yeah. The apartments that are right by the bar. Yeah, those. <laughs> yeah, those. I don't. There were there were no occupants at, at that time last year, but there will be this year. So that'll be it. with some protected, like they can just bring one of those, shut those windows down. And in fact, our mayor's living in one of them. So <laughs> right. we'll, so we'll see how. Uh, yeah, we'll see how how he enjoys it. Well, any uh, we appreciate the comments any anything else that you might add or anything else that I can I really like I mean the idea of, of uh, incorporating the cost recovery the cost recovery section I think that's important uh, I was reading that it was I mean, what, thirty thousand thirty five thousand dollars in unpaid fees that were charged to event organizers that were that were not collected yeah at that. so uh, having some kind of cost recovery I think uh, is important having the seventy thousand dollars set aside from the city uh, would definitely help with that so great Okay. Thanks. If there's nothing Thanks. else, thank you. Next item on the agenda is item five, consideration of resolution 1502, stating the time and date for the 2015 regular meetings of Parks, Recreation, <laughs> and Intergenerational Services Commission. Andre normally does this, but yeah. he's at the he's at the design workshop tonight. Uh, and I, I'm gonna look to Michelle for some help, but I think this is just where we ask you to approve the schedule and I'm assuming it's in their packet yep okay and it's on the back so uh, so we're asking you to approve uh, the meeting schedule for the upcoming year you guys get a chance to review that mm -hmm. is there a motion to approve the resolution yes I make a motion to approve the revolution the resolution of the uh, five dates listed here April 7th June 2nd August 4th October 6th and December 1st of 2015 for uh, our bi monthly meeting. Thank you, Commissioner. Is there a second? I'll second. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? No. Motion 
passes. Any future items requests? I have a question, um, Bob. Is there a way to maybe get some kind of presentation on the various services that we support for seniors uh, in, in the city, or is it just in general? Because I, I don't know anything about that, and I think the commission will benefit from having some kind of presentation um, from, I don't know, maybe from someone from the department to talk about the various services that we support. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And then um, I was curious to know to get an update on the um, assisted uh, living facility that was opening up. At our last meeting, we were going to have them come back and kind of give us an update of where they're at, um, if they were going to have Medicare, Medi-Cal beds available. I think we were waiting to have one more. Yeah. I know that when the managers were here, they were giving us overall, but maybe if there is staff already hired, that wh whoever. The oh, great. How that's going? Yeah. Yeah. That would make sense. That'd be great. And anything else, commissioners can reach out to staff on yeah. future items for the agenda. Oh, I want to thank uh, thank the uh, the uh, city of Westac for putting the uh, chips around the. Uh, uh, some of the little uh, apparatuses there at Bright Park. Because especially when it starts raining and so forth, uh, it gets kind of muddy there. And I noticed we still have quite a few people that want to sit there and utilize those apparatuses. So thank you very much. It, it turned out quite well, I see. Yeah, I noticed. Nice and green. All right, any other future items requests? All right, we can all contact staff if there's any other items that come up. Uh, B6B, commission calendar. Oh, just, all right. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? Okay. Motion by Commissioner Nichols. Second. Second. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Meeting adjourned. Thank you.